So Jordan Clarkson is having one great season for the Utah Jazz. To me, he has been one of the most entertaining players to watch this season when he has it going on. He's averaging a career high in points and assists, 19.5 points per game, along with 4.9 assists. His efficiency has kind of dropped off as of late, but losing their veteran point guard, Mike Conley, with injury has a lot to do with that, since he's now being asked to do even more now. Last night, though, he flashed his true potential. He played the perfect Jordan Clarkson game offensively in my eyes. He put up 33 points efficiently, was nuclear from the three-point line, and from that, he adjusted to the defense, got to the rim, or hit the mid-range, or of course, dished to his teammates. He ended up with five assists along with his 33 points. Now it's time to take a look at this performance because it was sensational and it shows his growth as a player and shows what he can be when he has it going on. Keep in mind, this was against the Los Angeles Clippers, a top five defense. But before we get into the film, remember to leave a like on the video. It helps out a ton. But without further ado, let's get into it. So first play, we got a nice little action. Vanderbilt is going to screen for Colin Sexton, and then he's going to get hit with the pass from Jordan Clarkson going right into a dribble handoff. Vanderbilt does a nice job just getting in the way of Terrence Mann, setting up a bunch of space for Jordan Clarkson just to rise up and fire for three. And it's early in the game, and since he hits that, that could potentially get him in a rhythm. So Jordan Clarkson in transition right here. And early on in the game, the Clippers were playing a little too off of Jordan Clarkson. As you can see, Nick Batum just keeps backing up and Clarkson, confident three-point shooter, is just gonna rise up and fire and knock it down. And now he's feeling it and the Clippers may be in trouble. So now we got the two-man game of Clarkson and Laurie Markin in their two best offensive threats. And there's gonna be a little miscommunication on this play from Reggie Jackson and Morris. Reggie Jackson is thinking about switching on to Markkinen while this dude is completely screwed by the screen from Markkinen. And now a little step back and that step back created a bunch of space for him to fire without much of a contest. And he's really feeling it now. And this right here is just disrespectful by Reggie Jackson. Olenek finds Jordan Clarkson and look at Reggie. He just keeps backing up. He doesn't even put a hand in the face. So what is Jordan Clarkson going to do? He's going to rise up and he's going to fire and knock it down. And look at this. The Clippers have had enough. He's not even past half court. He doesn't even have the ball in his hands. But Ty Lue told Terrence Mann, you are face guarding. You are face guarding Jordan Clarkson like you are a cornerback in the NFL. So now Jordan Clarkson is going to act like prime Odell Beckham Jr. Hit him with a little juke move, get off of him, run him into the screen, solid screen, and then he's just going to take his time. And notice he switches to the left hand. He switches to the left hand to avoid Terrence Mann. Easy lay in. And now notice from the previous play and this play, his shot making ability from the three point line has made the Clippers play super, super aggressive. I mean, they're picking them up very, very close to half court. And now the Utah Jazz are trying to hunt out Reggie Jackson, trying to get Terrence Mann off of Jordan Clarkson because Terrence Mann is a great on-ball defender. Nice execution here by Colin Sexton, completely obliterating Terrence Mann. So now you got Reggie Jackson on Jordan Clarkson. And look at Reggie's all the way up here because he has to respect the three-point shot now because Jordan Clarkson has not been missing that shot. So guess what? Hit the acceleration button, create contact, and then quickly, and I mean quickly, get it up before the shot blocker has any, any chance of, of blocking it. Again, just look at how the Clippers have adjusted. They start off the game playing under the three-point line in transition. Now John Wall, a slow-footed defender at his age, is playing very, very high because Jordan Clarkson has gained that respect. But the thing about Jordan Clarkson, right now he's not a one-trick pony. If you do that, you disrespect his driving capability, a little behind the back, see you later, I'm past the defender, He kind of loses it, but then he regains it. No rim protection in the game or no rim protection at the rim. You got Morris, you got Jackson, and Zubach is over here. So what does that mean? No rim protection, easy layup, no contest. If you're going to disrespect Jordan Clarkson like this, now he's going to attack you by driving to the rim and creating for himself or his teammates. 
And like I said, Jordan Clarkson adjusted his game in the second half. Coffee, you're going to play the transition three-pointer that I love to take. Well, guess what? I'm going to hit you with a little hezzy. I'm going to accelerate. I'm going to go right past you. And then I'm going to draw Walker Kessler's defender and dish it off like a point guard and give him an easy dunk. And right here in transition, Nick Batum does a pretty nice job initially. He takes away the three-point shot and then he takes away the drive. But guess what? Like I said, he's not a one-trick pony. Behind the back, step back, look at the space created. Not a good contest, not good enough. Right in your face, bang. So in the first half, it was all about Jordan Clarkson making three-pointers. So the Clippers took that away, but Jordan Clarkson adjusted his game and abused them at the rim, in the mid-range, and creating for others. And then Colin Sexton is going to make sure they don't forget him that he can hit threes as well. I mean, Jordan Clarkson has all the attention of the Clippers. Laurie Markin is posting up. Reggie Jackson is defending, not even looking at Markinen. Not even he's just focused on face guarding Jordan Clarkson. He, he really is. Eventually, Markinen finds him because Reggie Jackson fell asleep. Like the silly man he is, a little swipe through move, and then he just dribbles to his spot, rises up. Jordan Clarkson was a three-level unstoppable scorer in this game. And this game truly showed his offensive potential. Yo, Roko, you're playing me this aggressive? Well, guess what? I'm going to turn into Chris Paul. I'm going to change speeds, slow down a bit, accelerate again, accelerate again. And then I'm going to throw it up to Vanderbilt for the dunk and basically end the game on that play. As I'm recording this video, the Jazz are currently the seventh seed in the Western Conference at 13 and 11, but they're only 3.5 games out of first place. The West is very highly competitive. So if you go on a win streak, you could all of a sudden be at the top of the standings. But if you go on a losing streak, you can be all of a sudden at the bottom. It is a very weird Western Conference um, right now. However, I expect the Jazz to continue to play like a playoff team because they play basketball the way the, uh, the uh, because they play basketball the right way. And eventually, Mike Conley's going to come back, and he helps the team a lot, and he helps Jordan Clarkson as well. And Jordan Clarkson has been playing out of his mind, and he needs to continue to play out of his mind for this team to keep on winning let me know your thoughts below in the comment section check out my other videos if you got time have yourself a great day and peace out